sort of belief in a Christian's life is to have something they feel like will last forever, eternal if you will. It's like the shape of the shell. It's round, it has a beginning, but it absolutely never has an ending. It took a lot of years for a handful of brave sailors to figure out the earth was round like you see, and not flat like they once thought it was. And once they figured it to be round, they would use the aid of the star here on the front. And we guide them to a lot of different lands, places, and destinations. And once there, they would bring back things the world back home they never saw. One thing would be a flower so special that it would bloom in the dead of winter. Christians fell in love with this flower. They would call it the poinsettia. And they would dedicate it to a special time in the life of their Christ. Maybe Jesus got a new flower. Should we flip it, you will see a lily, beautiful, pure, and white. The Christians like this would even better. And they would dedicate this to a more special time. And what better than the resurrection? But you can't have the resurrection without first you have the crucifixion. On the front of the shell, you'll see five holes. The two holes in the top and the two holes in the bottom would represent the four nail holes in the hands and feet. And the one in the center is the Roman spirit that within everything is Christ hung on the cross. But to a settler, it's a little different because the two holes in the top represent a low oxidative entrance to a perfectly formed Bermuda Triangle right here at the bottom. And should a boat sail through the gap, they call it without plummeting down. There's always a 50-50 shot that he may not come back and tell the tale. Folks, if I'm not killing anything living, I'm going to open the shell, show you what's on the inside. Does anybody have any clues before I do? Put the doves. All right, well, let's open it up. Right here in the center, we'll pull out what would be, ladies and gentlemen, the world's most perfect star. That star is perfect in every way. There's not a flaw in it anywhere, and they can't be because there would be no flaws in the star of Bethlehem that would lead the wise men to the manger. But there's so many people that were saying doves or birds, and there is a bird out here, ladies and gentlemen. It's a bird of love, peace, and most of all, it is a bird of direction. Should you see it, you follow it. It will bring you back to land every time. It's a bird that's been used for the Vatican, to magic shows, magic shows to matrimony. It seems that anywhere that love and peace, as much as a little direction was needed, somewhere a dove has played a very vital role. As the gentleman and a lot of other people said, if I break my star down from that star, it comes five perfectly formed tiny little white doves. As you're looking at the doves, ladies and gentlemen, you want to notice that two of the doves will be larger than the other three. That's said to be the two used by the greatest settler of all times, and you would know him by the name of Noah, as he would bring out doves for the olive branch. Those other three, well, that's the offspring of those first two. They've been guiding settlers in safely and creating love and peace ever since Noah put his first pair on the ark. Ladies and gentlemen, you had about a pretty ocean as you could possibly ask for. Great dolphin show. I hope everybody learned how a shrimp boat works now. When you go get you some seafood, if you eat the stuff, you'll know a little bit more about how it's caught, where it, how it's going to be prepared to get to your table. The next thing is, as far as the overcast, it wasn't too hot today. It's been one of our milder days we've had. And I want to leave you with a